Hello, it's another edition of Plus Reports, a compilation of the stories and events that made the news recently. Welcome. I'm Jacinta Obiuku. Just like COVID-19 pandemic, cholera is one infection to be concerned about, as it is still real, spreading and deadly. Despite a national pressure activated to check the disease, most states are recording a rise in cholera infection. 653 persons have died from it in 2021 alone, and the figures have risen beyond 10,000. Plus TV Africa's correspondent Aneta Felix spoke with a public health physician on how best to stop the spread of the disease. Cholera is a fecal orally transmitted disease. This means that you can get infected when you eat food or drink water that has been contaminated with feces. Symptoms of cholera include watery diarrhea, vomiting, dehydration, and without proper treatment, rapid deterioration and death. We reached a consultant public health physician at the University of Calabar Teaching Hospital. She is Dr. Abasi Akpapan. She explains the causes of cholera, including the challenge of open defecation and poor environmental sanitation. If you poo into surface of water, you are likely to spread cholera, especially if you have infection. So people shouldn't be pooing inside water. Like you go to a stream and you pull there, that is unsafe. When there is no access to clean water, water that is safe for drinking, poor environmental sanitation, also sanitation in the home. So the, um, your cooking equipment are not clean, the water you are cooking with is not clean, your pot, your, or you are not properly cooking food, especially seafood. If you think cholera only affects those in rural areas, you need to think again. For someone who is in a rural area, he would go to a stream and would defecate, okay? But for someone in the urban area, you might build your tap, the source of your water or your soaky way might be upstream, like might be on a higher level. You know, eventually with time, the content might begin to seep and then it gets to the source of your water. So your water should be uphill and your soaky way should be downhill. Here's the good news. It can be avoided altogether. To avoid cholera, individuals should drink safe, potable water. They should also prepare their food with clean water. Individuals should also wash hands often with soap and water. Do not pour in any body of water. That's use toilets, use latrines, cook your food properly, keep it covered, eat it hot. Dispose diapers away from sources of drinking water. Nigeria is currently battling a cholera epidemic with over 10,000 cases recorded in 22 of 36 states. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control has activated a National Cholera Emergency Operations Center as part of efforts to ensure that the infection and death rate does not continue to rise. Aneta Felix, Plus TV Africa. Provision of safe water and sanitation is critical to prevent and control the transmission of cholera and other waterborne diseases. And on COVID-19 surge, Lagosians are having a hard time coping with the third wave of coronavirus. The daily rising number of deaths is worrisome. Governor Babajide Samwulu briefed residents on the development. He confirmed that Lagos has been recording a daily average of six deaths at isolation centers recently. The development in the country has stirred up some sort of consciousness regarding ways to prevent the spread of the virus. These days, you can almost caught the anxiety in the air with a knife. Just when you think you can finally relax the COVID-19 protocols, Lagosians get hit with an eight-fold increase in infection rate. That's about 4,300 confirmed cases in July alone. Governor Samuel Lu hints that 352 patients be admitted into the state-run isolation facilities in the same month. You want to know if Nigerians are still keeping to the prescribed COVID-19 measures? Here you go. Some people they do of service, 
why some people they believe that there's no more existing uh, of COVID-19 in Nigeria or in the particular areas? I try as much as possible to keep myself and also to keep um, the protocol. I know people that had COVID-19. I know friend that has been positive. I've seen things. I've taken my first. I'm fully fascinated already. But that's why the fact I've seen news. I've read about it, so I can't be careless about it. Truth of the matter is that government cannot take responsibility for all of this. So it is now our duty to protect ourselves. If normal sensitization continues as it was before, is we keep reminding people of uh, the caution to be taken. And just so you know, non-compliance with the protocols is not without consequences. Health professionals don't leave us in dark. You know, there's a way you communicate that information for behavior to change. And I think, uh, you know, somehow we'll not be able to communicate this in a way for, for in a consistent enough manner for people to understand and, you know, adhere to that. We're all learning about this. Nobody knows everything. Um, and we, all of us have suffered. You know, we've lost loved ones. Uh, we've lost jobs. Uh, you know, all of that has happened. So now, you know, we're in a situation where, you know, it's not just government telling us what to do. It is about all of us. What do we need to do? However, the governor is urging residents with symptoms to reach out to Eco Telemed on this number, toll free 080-0035663. And all state accredited health care facilities can manage COVID-19 cases. And here is reminding the doubting thermoses that COVID-19 is still very much out there and Nigerians are obliged to adhere with the safety protocols. And now to the Northeast crisis. The armed conflict in that region has been over a decade now, and millions of people have been displaced. This perhaps makes it one of the worst, most complex humanitarian emergencies. That's according to the International Committee of Red Cross. With that, soaring prices are affecting the livelihood of these displaced Nigerians. More details in this report. Millions of people have fled from their homes and lost their livelihood. That's because of the ongoing conflict in northeast Nigeria. Sadly, soaring inflation is not making the situation better. They can hardly eat. The inflation rate climbed a four-year record of 18% in March 2021. The International Committee of the Red Cross ICROC provides microeconomic grants to vulnerable group of people who lost their income due to the ongoing armed conflict. However, the steep inflation of the past year has hit them hard. Meet Aisha Omar, a widowed mother of eight from Borno State, who was affected by the conflict that left her and her children displaced. <laughs> Ali Kolomi, who is a green trader, has a similar experience. I was born in the village of 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 ICRC Deputy Head of Subdelegation, Sarah Aumomohi, spoke on how these Nigerians from the Northeast have suffered continuous conflict and insecurity. And here is what ICRC plans to do in helping these communities restore their livelihoods. Today, the strategy at the ICRC is to continue exchanges and conversations with communities, authorities, but also other humanitarian actors on the ground to find sustainable ways to help communities communities help restore the dignity they once had by restoring their livelihood, taking back their livelihood. As of 2020, more than 16,000 people had lost their income because of these conflicts. They have received cash for investment through the ICRC microeconomic grant to start a business. Also, about 173 entrepreneurs received grants from the Tony Elumelu Foundation Partnership. Hopefully, these gestures would go some length in helping the affected people cope with the impact. Ngozika or for Plus TV Africa.
Hunger is on the rise worldwide. The combination of conflicts, COVID-19, increased food prices and effects of climate change and decimated livelihoods and access to food. A call on both the government, the humanitarian community, the United Nations and non-governmental organizations to join efforts to address the issue. Now, the Gwawana of Lamode community of Adamawa State, Northeast Nigeria, has urged the Chief of Army Staff to call the officers and men of the 23 Brigade Command to order to avoid chaos in the community. <laughs> People of Guyana community come out en masse to bid farewell to God Jacob and also demand for justice over his untimely death. Officers and men of the 23 Brigade Command in the community have been fingered in this ugly incident that claimed some six lives. The Army Public Relations Officer of the Brigade Command earlier released a statement debunking the allegation. Now, Members of this community want the quick intervention of the Chief of Army staff to check the unabated maltreatment of community members by the Army. When this incident took place, Ahmad Mumoni Fentry was at the scene. He went to the clinic, he personally go around the wards. He personally sent his own little assistance. So it would be surprising for the Nigerian Army to come out and say they have not shot anybody. I personally took those boys to the maternity. I was right there in the maternity. Those army were even approaching me with their guns. When I called the deputy governor, the deputy governor now alerted the brigade commander. I think they were called. Then they withdrew. So they have no reason or whatsoever to say they are not involved in it. After all, you can. This is the evidence. One among the boys is dead. Today we just buried it. The shoot about six of them but the following day they still the soldier denied that there was nothing like that but well my brother is one of the victims you know it's something of pain of which there is no one that you could take this thing to and you just have to bear it Bulus Daniel who is the sole administrator of Guyana Development Area appeals to the Adamawa state government to also help as much as possible to help broker peace in the community there is need for peace and I also call on the government to address the Nigerian army that are at the gate of the company. Yes, the army are there to, to maintain law and order. But where they, they cross their bounds, it will be another thing again. Because we are made to understand that they bull people there, but from my findings, most of the people that were bulled, they, they, they may have offended them in one way or the other. But we are also calling, let there be diplomacy. The appeal has gone out from Guyana community to the authorities once again. The people are now hoping that their cry for help will not be ignored any longer. You're watching Plus Reports. There is more after this break. Thanks for staying with us. Now, death toll in the attacks on Miango and neighboring communities in Plateau State is more than 40. The native Irigwe people are accusing Fulanis of attacking them on two days after the widely reported violence of Saturday, August 2, 2021. Over 40 farmlands with a variety of crops were completely destroyed and several household items and domestic animals were cuttered away. Ngozika Ohai Jesse has more. Over the weekend, the Iriwe Development Association released a press statement notifying the world about an attack that left at least seven persons dead and more than 250 houses raised in some communities in Miango Chiefdom. Davidson Mallison is a youth activist and a spokesman of the Iriwe community. He joined Plus TV Africa on our breakfast show, where he explained that another attack took place on Monday, leading to the death of more than 40 people in total. They raised down more than 250 houses in their forsaken villages. Not fewer than seven people were killed as at on the day I released that press statement. But after my press statement, more four dead bodies were recovered, making a total of 11 people that were killed in that particular incident. Yesterday night, an attack. The rest. Four, five, six, seven, eight communities and 2,000 households in that community just yesterday night. 
He also revealed that Heather's hired mercenaries to carry out a coordinated attack. There is a place called, let's say this is not a forest, it's a rocky Sambisa, a rocky Sambisa in Plateau State. This is where these people hired mercenaries. The Plateau State chairman of Miati Alakato Breeders Association of Nigeria, Mohamed Abdullahi, was also on the breakfast show. According to him, the Irigwe community attacked Fulani Heathers three days before the Saturday killings and raising of houses. It started on Wednesday, where they attacked Rafim Bauna and killed nine cows and then a one herder, which on Friday, uh, mocks are not able to attend their, their, their Friday prayers because of the afraid of attacks by Uruguay. The latest incident in Plateau State is bringing back memories of just a few years back when Nigerians regularly heard of attacks and counter-attacks between farmers and herders. In all the violence, security agencies are always blamed for not responding appropriately or taking sides. Critics also point to the inability of the state and federal government to punish perpetrators of these attacks. Many are looking forward to this changing with the latest incident. Gozika Ohaechesi for Plus TV Africa. The National Youth Service Corps has organized its first Environmental Sanitation Day in all local government areas across Nigeria. This program was organized due to findings from the recently concluded Nationwide Health Initiative Rural Dwellers Program, which indicated that greater percentage of ailments recorded and treated across the country had a direct uh, link to poor sanitation and hygiene practices. The Director General of NYSC, General Shuaibu Ibrahim, has approved the observance of the NYSC National Environmental Sanitation Day, owing to the fact that the Nigerian government has always relied on the scheme to take the lead in various fronts, especially in areas of sensitization and mobilization of communities at the grassroots. This um, sanitation exercise has created more awareness. We've um, used the opportunity to sensitize the community on the essence of hygiene and cleanliness. You know, if you are aware of our program, the Health Initiative for Rural Dwellers, you realize that the last one we just held, we um, realized that there was a link between them. Um, poor sanitation and most of the diseases and the illness that were treated. So that is what uh, better this program. In Lagos, we visited the Etiosa One local government where coppers were assigned to clean various locations, including the Obao Buniru's palace. What we're trying to do is to teach the, um, the leaders of tomorrow, we the youths, that we should assist with cleaning up our environment. We should assist if maybe other people aren't doing it. We should assist and get the job done. I think it's important that we as youth service members continue to impact the society by helping around, letting people know that the environment needs saving, basically. And it keeps us in check. It just makes people more conscious of the environment. A cleaner society is better for everybody. We all know cleanliness is close to godliness. So. If we're all in areas where parts are dirty, parts are a little bit clean, you know, it's always good to put in effort to clean the environment. The Bale of Oniru commends this program and expresses his gratitude to the NYSC scheme. In fact, it is a great pleasure having this type of uh, occasion in our palace today by the youth coppers. In fact, it's a great thing. The National Environmental Sanitation Day, organized by NYSC, is a program that should be encouraged. We look forward to the continuity of this program as it promotes a cleaner, safer, and better Nigeria. Nemma Ibedike, Plus TV Africa. Well, the exercise is one of the several ways the scheme is giving back to society and also exemplifying her motto of service and humanity. Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Professor Akina Bayomi, says Nigeria will be one of the best medically rich countries in the world if only medical professionals abroad can return home. Professor Bayomi said this at the state chapter of the Nigerian Medical Association's uh, scientific conference tagged medical practice and the law. 
emerging challenges for the Nigerian doctors. The emerging challenges for the Nigerian doctor vis-à-vis -vis practice and the law in improving the health indices through a functional system form the major discuss at this conference. Lagos State Health Commissioner Professor Abayomi speaks on the Delta COVID-19 variant and resident Dr. Strike. He says the variant is under control with Nigerian professionals having huge diasporic influence. This is in Lagos at the Lagos State Biobank uh, suggests that uh, we have um, quite a large number of international COVID variants circulating in our environment. Um, we're doing um, a lot of work to be able to uh, characterize them. So in Lagos State, we take the medical um, fraternity very seriously. We've tried our best to address all the issues, all the issues. Chairman of Nigerian Medical Association Lagos Chapter, Dr. Adetunji Adenekon, laments that there is an increasing case of alleged medical malpractice and negligence in Lagos State. He says the emerging challenges will afford all stakeholders the opportunity to appraise developments in the sector. Myriads of uh, challenges of issue of neg medical negligence perceived most times as medical negligence, though they may be actual. And uh, we are also being faced with a lot of social media trial on medical issues, the case of medical errors or malpractice or sometimes quackery. As a case. On the ongoing strike and expectation from the federal government, enemy Lagos chairman and president of resident doctors in different hospitals in Lagos bear their minds. So that this collateral damage can be reduced to the barest minimum. And I appeal and pray that this will be the shortest of strike that we have ever had. We need them to do something to act, to keep to their promises to keep to their words and we don't want to be um, people to be paying lip service to things that are essential to the Nigerian populace. We, we are going to see a lot of action uh, but we haven't seen that so we would uh, love to see that action. We would love to see resident doctors who were on the Give Miss platform that were supposed to be captured in the new IPs platform. We would love to see them being captured immediately. Dr. Adenekon said that the theme could not have come at a better time when almost all unfavorable outcomes of medical care were seen as consequence of medical and dental practitioners' negligence. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. In the view of Nigerians' continuous suspension of Twitter and recent moves to push through two bills to amend the National Broadcasting Act and the Nigeria Press Council Act, the U.S. Consulate in the General has organized a program to discuss the new and continuing threats to press freedom and freedom of expression in Nigeria. Fumi Unajafe followed the report. The U.S. Consulate event on press freedom and right of expression opened with the U.S. Consul General, Claire Pierangelo, emphasizing on the value of promoting and protecting a free press as an essential pillar of responsive and an accountable democracy. The Biden-Harris administration is committed to putting human rights at the heart of our foreign policy, and that includes press freedom and freedom of expression. I know that you all agree with me that pre the free press is a core pillar to any successful democracy. Ensuring that the media is not stifled is not just the responsibility of the government, but the media itself, which needs to look inward. Ethics is often personal. Individuals decide to be ethical in the discharge of their duties, and that is what we should emphasize. If we have more people holding themselves to account in newsrooms in a matter of time, the people who kill stories will reduce in number. It is important that the media understands their legal power and the purpose which they fulfill in the society. The duty to make government an elected or selected politicians accountable is not just the duty of the media alone. The media also has the duty to assist the people to make the government accountable. Too often, the media may not understand that that duty is even more onerous and sacrosanct than the duty that they have. Because there are some things the media will not be able to do by itself. 
in holding the government accountable. The need to continue to push for events like this to encourage the media to speak up was emphasized. We hope that the capacity building, sending journalists to the United States for exchange programs will really help build the capacity so journalists can report and keep reporting until people are really seeing that difference is being made because journalism cannot stop. The media cannot stop. And social media will not stop. And so it's really incumbent upon all of us to keep pushing and making sure that press freedom is respected and press freedom is expanded. For Bill Raja, for reporting for Plus TV Africa. Well, the expectation here is that a government should be genuinely committed to transparency, accountability, and anti-corruption and the protection of the rule of law. It's a wrap now, but before we go, let's to remind you to follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I'm Jacinta Obiupo. Thanks for watching.